What up, Gamecock fam? Everybody else, this is J Rock back with you again. And in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the coaching search, uh, and really just the three candidates that I can pretty much say uh, with, with with a lot of confidence is going to be the the short list, the the final three guys that are going to be looked at and considered uh, for this position. And kind of give my thoughts and sort of my concerns on that uh, with one in particular. Uh, and then on the back half of this video after that, I am going to get into Georgia a little bit. Talk a little bit about that game uh, for this week. Uh, but it's not going to be the full you know, breakdown and like stats and you know, final prediction and stuff. That will come Friday. I'm not doing anything tomorrow uh, given the fact that it's Thanksgiving. So I'll be you know, enjoying time with the family uh, and a good meal as we all will. So, you know, just be looking for that when it comes. But, <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to talk coaching search and then a little bit of Georgia uh, in this video. Uh, and before we dive into it, if you guys would, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. It only takes a second. Uh, and like I said, as always, uh, comment down below. Let me know what I can do uh, to be better uh, in these videos. Uh, all criticism is well. So, enough talking about that. Now, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, so, the three guys that this is pretty much going to come down to is going to be uh, Shane Beamer, Billy Napier, and Jamie Chadwell. Now, if y'all are paying attention, right now, there is a divide in the fan base right now. You got this half over here. Uh, well, well, it's, it seems to probably maybe be the majority, but you have a part of the fan base that is, they're all in on, on Shane Beamer. They are aboard the Beamer train, okay? Then the other part, they're not impressed uh, with the possibility, and they're, they don't have the same confidence, and they are not on the Beamer train. I myself, I don't know, I believe I might have said this in my last video, but if I didn't, I'm one of those who, I, I am not on the Beamer train, okay? I, to me, I just don't have the best feeling about him uh, as, as, as the next coach. Uh, so, you know, let's talk a little bit about why that is. And, 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 I, and it's kind of sort of a message I want to put out there uh, to, to, to the fan base. So, as we all know, there's been a lot of former players, you know, Marcus Lattimore, Devontae Holloman, even who was probably my favorite, you know, my favorite game called DJ Swearinger, even the, you know, even the HBC Spurrier himself uh, has given Beamer the vote of confidence. Because, of course, now, you know, back in Spurrier's time, Beamer was on the staff. And look, you know, I think it's, I think it's cool that, you know, all these people are, are, are giving Beamer that vote of confidence. Okay, um, but look, I think we need to kind of slow down and pump the brakes a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong, I am I know that we're not the one ultimately making the decision and making the hire, but as Ray Tanner has said before, it matters what the fans think. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be looking at this, and it might kind of be taken into consideration a little bit on what the fans think. So, and what I want to encourage game game fans to do is, like I said, just slow it down a little bit. Let's not rush to jump on this Beamer train. Uh, and here's the reason why, especially when you compare these these, these final three candidates. Um, Beamer has not been a head coach. Now he's been an assistant. He's been you know a positions coach and a recruiting coordinator. But he has not been a head coach. Now, granted, being a head coach isn't, you know, being an existing or former head coach ain't the end-all, be-all. But when you, when you think about it, I mean, this guy's been at it for 20 years. Um, you know, I mean, I, my biggest thing is, is he capable of being a head coach? You know, does he have what it takes to fulfill that role? Because... If you look at it, I mean, that was one of the biggest problems with Muschamp. Muschamp was just not able to fulfill that role of being a head coach. He didn't have 
what you know he didn't have what it takes to to be able to you know handle that responsibility and to fulfill that role and, and like i said i understand that that's great that all these former players and everything you know they they are speaking on the behalf of beamer but something that I have seen uh, recently within the past day or two that I think, you know, some Gamecock fans that fall in, you know, the same camp as me have pointed out is, well, you know, if you look at all the current players and, you know, just like the recent most champ players and stuff, and if you were to go up and ask uh, anybody on the team now or any of the staff members and stuff, I mean, if you were to ask them, they're going to they're gonna tell you that most champ was the right guy. They believe he should still be there, that he he shouldn't have been fired. Now, <laughs> if you go out to the Gamecock fan base, probably about 99%, if not more, of them are going to disagree with that statement. But, I mean, it's kind of the same principle, though, right? I mean, you got all these people that were in favor of Muschamp, even though clearly he wasn't working out. So that's the kind of thing I want Gamecock fans to understand and realize is that even though there is all these former players and, you know, like I said, Spurrier and all that, even though they are putting in the vote of confidence for Beamer, I don't know if I would let that, you know, play too big of a factor. I think by rushing aboard, you know, you know this, this campaign for endorsing the hiring of Beamer, I, I think it's a lot of it's coming out of emotion and just ties to those, you know, those spurrier times. And look, that that's not going to be, you know, that that shouldn't be what we're really deciding things on when it comes to who we want, you know, or, or who we hope the next head coach is. Like I said, ultimately it's not our decision, but our opinions are looked at. So. And look, like I said, I know it's not the end all be all for for him to have been a head coach. But look, if you come, if it comes down, you know, if you got these three guys in the end, and you got Beamer who has who hasn't been a head coach, uh, but then you've got the other two guys that have. I mean, because they have experience, you know, we know that they can fulfill that role. Now, I'm not also. At the same time, I'm not saying that those guys are perfect candidates and that they don't have any risk, you know, within themselves. I mean, because the the big question with Napier and, and Chadwell would be, well, can they, you know, come over to the SEC and have the same amount of success and, and, and everything uh, <clears throat> as where they currently are now, uh, you know, being you know, a group of five teams? I mean, no way to be entirely sure. I would probably lean towards yes. I believe they're good enough coaches that, you know, even that change. I mean, it might would take a little bit more time, you know, might take them, a, a, you know, uh, you know, a, a certain amount of time there to adjust, but I think that they're capable. And it's not that I'm saying that I'm not capable. It, huh. <clears throat> it's not that I'm saying that I don't believe Beamer's capable of being a good head coach and being successful in SC. It's just we don't have anything to go off of. And, and see, the thing is, that's what I'm saying, though, but when you look at these three guys, even though all of them are at risk and are, are kind of a, a little bit of a, a roll of the dice, when you look at it, Beamer is unnecessarily a bigger risk that you don't have to take. Uh, Napier and Chadwell are the, the safer you know, choices. And and I mean that in, in in a positive sense, not not a negative one. Um, I, I mean it's safe. You know, they're they're safer in the good way because they have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have proven themselves, and you know, and, and there's a little bit less risk than them. So, you know, and and you look at like you look at what Napier is doing now, Louisiana, and if you look at at Chadwell with what he's doing with Coastal. Um, and which now, I mean, he's coached multiple teams and, you know, and that's pretty much all he has done is like just turn teams around, uh, which is why personally, I believe out of three, he would probably give us the quickest turnaround, you know, as far as competing for the East and, you know, goals beyond that. So, and I know before, you know, Napier was my favorite, but I got to say, 
and I don't know if you guys knew this, but I really want to know as much as I can about, you know, the potential, the, the next head coach uh, of this football team, of my of my team. So I go through, I look at, you know, these introductory press conferences that they've done before in the past, you know, all these interviews. I mean, there you'd be surprised. There's a lot of stuff you can go in there and watch uh, from these guys. You can really learn about them. You know their their personalities, their their mindset towards things, um, how they are with their teams, you know what their outlook on things are, how they get their teams prepared, how they approach uh, things. I mean, you can really kind of get the sense for all of that and, and see that and hear them talk about that. And so what I what I found is after you know looking all that up, and I like some of the things in that sense that I've seen from Beamer as well. But with looking at, at those in all three guys. I think that's kind of what has now pushed Chadwell to the front for me. And I think that's what now makes him my favorite uh, over Napier. Um, I mean, if you listen to this guy, I mean, it's just the message that he gives to his teams, uh, you know, his the culture that he instills. And, 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 I mean, you want to talk about somebody that's going to bring the right culture back to South Carolina, um, you know, you know t- to the Gamecocks. And somebody that is going to have these kids, you know, focused and, and develop this talent and stuff. I mean, I think all of them definitely could do it and have the potential. But, you know, like I said, I, I believe more so in Chadwell now. That's, that's you know, one, one of the multiple things on why I am now moving him to my new favorite. You know, but, um, <clears throat> so, let's see here. Uh, what... Now, like I said, and I, there are things that I like about Beamer. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's not that I'm trying to down the guy or trash him. I mean, and he's doing, you know, pretty good things there at Oklahoma. You know, he's the assistant coach, you know, and he's doing work with some, you know, offensive positions there, uh, working with them. But I think at the end of it all, you know, at the end of the day when you look at it, uh, yeah, I just say Napier or Chadwell just has to be the less risky – uh, you know, just just the the sort of the better option. Um, yeah, not everybody, and not all of you are probably agreeing with me on this, and I mean that's fine. I'm just trying to point something out here. Um, like I said, I just want us to kind of think about this. But you know, I mean, regardless of who is hired, uh, you know, I, I mean, and if it is Beamer, if Beamer's one of the hiring. I'm going to get behind him. I'm going to support him. And I'm just, I'm really going to hope that he proves me wrong. You know, fingers crossed. So, I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, it's definitely going to be, you know, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, I got to say, man, I, I'm really eating this coaching search up. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, scouring the internet everywhere. I'm trying to find every update and every interview, every detail, every, Every analysis, everything that I can find on this thing, I, you know, I'm really keeping up with it. So, uh, and, and one more thing, real quick, too, before I get off of this. Um, and another th- another thing that seems to be encouraging a big push for Beamer as opposed to Napier or Chadwell is because of the fact that he was at South, you know, he's been at South Carolina before. He knows what it means to be a Gamecock and stuff. Now, that's true. I definitely agree with that. And it's the fact that a lot of people, you know, say, well, this would be his dream job. And that's true. And maybe, like I said, and because he has actually been at South Carolina before, he probably has, you know, the the most unique um, and maybe, you know, genuine perspective. But you got to be honest. Napier, a guy who, like I said, used to be, you know, used to work with Dabo at Clemson. He played quarterback at Furman. You know, he has strong ties to the state. Uh, you know, Chadwell, I mean, he, this is where South Carolina is where he has spent his whole entire coaching career. I mean, and these guys, and look, they still understand this. They, they know South Carolina is a program. I'm pretty sure. It's not like they're like, you know, like who you know the, the Gamecocks who so I mean you know it, it's nothing like that and you got to think I mean t- to be in the SEC to coach there to be at a school like South Carolina you couldn't honestly sit there and tell me that you know Napier and Chadwell 
Like, this would not be, like, a desirable job for them. Almost sort of like a dream-type job. Uh, because I, I think it would be. I mean, I think this would be a job that they would be very, that both of them would be very happy with as well, and they would probably stay here long-term. I, I honestly believe that. But, you know, but like I said, it, you know, it, we'll see how it shakes out. And like I said, you know, no matter who they hire, like I do believe it's going to be out of those three. But out of those three, whoever they hire, I'm going to stand behind them. I'm going to support them 100%. And we we'll just got to hope for the best. So, uh, but that's it on that. So now let's go ahead and move into a little bit of Georgia. <laughs> now, you guys probably seen my last video. <clears throat> um, in which I meant some of the stuff that I said there. All right, especially uh, with the fact that you you know you suck, Georgia. I just I don't like you. Oh my gosh, I just I really don't. Um, and but yeah, I mean these, these teams are kind of opposites this year. You know, of course, you know uh, Georgia's you know doing still fairly well. Uh, you know, South Carolina, like I said, is struggling. All right, they're beat up. I mean, we've got so many players down now. Yeah, they're questionable, doubtful. I was saying it, this. I mean, at this point, you know, are there how many wheels do we have left on this wagon? Because they've been falling off left and right. Um, but you know, I think the defense is starting to step up. Like I said, you know, with last week what we've seen. Um, so you know, and what's going to really you know suck about this game is, like I said, you know, we've done so well with injuries, you know, throughout this this year. But then when it comes to this game like this, then all of a sudden we've got guys that are hurt, that are banged up. Because I said a lot of guys are questionable. There's some guys that are doubtful. Or most likely going to be without, you know, Shy Smith, um, which is really going to be a bummer. Um, and, and look, in this game, you've got to start Luke Doty. There's no way that you trot Colin Hill out there. Um, especially that being that we are down – uh, you know, our biggest receiver, I mean, really our only true playmaker there at that position. If you send Hill out there, he's not going to be able to get the ball out to anybody, and he's just going to get eaten alive by that Georgia defense, and he's just going to get sacked, sacked, and sacked again. Like, it, it, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be down and out of this game before you can blink an eye. And so, Doty offers you that ability to be a dual threat, to use his legs, to extend plays, to complement the running game. I mean, and the guy don't look too bad passing either. Like, I, th I think he's doing an admirable job for being a true freshman. And, look, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, do you really want to start him against Georgia, you know, throw him to the wolves? And look, it's like I've said before. You know you've heard me say this before in one of my previous videos. Look, you signed up to come play SEC ball. And guess what that entails? Starting against Georgia. And it's best to go ahead and get him out there this year, let him make his mistakes, get him this experience, get him used to this stage. That way we don't have to worry about doing it next year. You know, keep him ahead of the curve. That If you do that, in the end, you're going to benefit benefit him more than you would possibly hurt him You know, by putting him out there. And I feel like he's a guy he... I mean, if he goes out there and makes a mistake, I mean, he ain't going to get too down about it. I mean, this guy just enjoys playing football. I mean, he'll learn from it. He'll shake it off. He'll move on. I'm pretty sure. So, uh, but it seems like Georgia's found himself a quarterback. Um, you know, we'll see. We only got one game to go off of, but, I mean, you know, probably going to be a solid option. You know, smart. Finally, you know, <laughs> uh, finally smartened up. Uh, and, and decided to get a, you know, field a solid QB out there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this is going to be a real tough game for South Carolina. Like I said, we are struggling with injuries and everything. I wish that they've got some injuries too. I believe they're going to have some guys out, but I don't think they're in, uh, nowhere near as bad a shape <laughs> as we are. But, um, you know, and, and then especially with the opt outs on top of that. So, but you know, it's going to be interesting to see, like, you know, how how hard are these guys going to be willing to fight? You know, can they scrounge up, you know, muster up enough effort um, and, and make enough plays to go out there and try and win this game? And look, I'm just saying, it's, I'm not saying it's likely, of course, but I'm just going to say, don't, you know, I mean, this is, you know, especially with this being the rivalry game that it is, don't count anything out. I'm telling you, don't count anything out. So, Georgia, just know, 
it is pot you know there could be a chance that you get shocked again this year uh, that South Carolina beats you again and man I hope they do oh my goodness that is going to just put the icing uh, on the cake uh, that will be this Thanksgiving weekend uh, so oh I'd love nothing more because I like I said behind Clemson Georgia's my most hated team I can't stand Georgia so but you know we'll see but like I said I'll have more on the game you know going toward a lot more uh, Friday so, you know, stay tuned for that, guys. Um, and, you know, this is going to be the motto all week. You know, you know, South Carolina, you know, South Carolina, you know, we rule. Georgia sucks. And you know what? Forget Georgia. You know, th- this is a no-dog zone. So, come on down, come on down to Columbia, uh, and we'll show you how to get back to Athens real quick. So, uh... Yeah, but that's all I got. But until next time, uh, this is J-Rock saying peace, spurs up, God bless, go Gamecocks. Georgia sucks.